Welcome to the Hookup on Music with your genre jumping host, Tony B. It's me, or Tony Maroney, like they say in the song, Tony Maroney. How's it going out there, everyone? We are really glad to join you tonight on episode 81. Got a lot of cool stuff planned for you, so please, please uh, have yourself a good time. Sit back, grab a beverage, grab whatever you want to grab, and just let's let's have some fun talking tunes um 81 episodes i just keep playing all these episodes in my head i remember it was like 54 or 81 episodes all right let's get started um let's start with some new releases okay we always start right here and let's start with a band that just kind of creeped up on my scene uh the name of the band's called the red clay strays they are uh well, they got a little country, they got a little rock, they got a little, some southern, they got some this, they got some that. Uh, they were formed in Mobile, Alabama. Um, best, best, uh, best, 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 best known for probably being um, super, super, super hot when their 2022 single Wondering Why came out. Um, um, very, very viral uh, band that uh, crazy uh Reached number 71 on the Billboard Hot 100. Never honestly before doing the show ever heard of this band or that. Uh, so digging a little bit deeper, um, this band, ooh, they got uh they got a little uh they got some they got some really, 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 really good stuff. They got two studio albums, okay. Moment of Truth came out April 29th of 2022. Um, uh, made it by these moments. Just came out this past weekend, July 26, 2024. And let me tell you, this album is smoking. Lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of good songs. Um, one of the songs off this new album, um, it's titled Drowning. And uh, when listening to it, you're, you're going to be drowning in some good tunes. My people who love the Sturgill Simpsons and maybe the... Uh, Jason Isabel's and uh, Lyle Lovett and the uh, maybe a little Dwight Yoakam um, and then maybe a little Rock and Edge. Great guitar. Check out that song right there. That uh, song is called uh, "Drown Drowning," and uh, it really, really, really hits. They also got a song on the Twister soundtrack. A lot, a lot of songs popping up on that Twister soundtrack. Kadu County is the song from that. But uh, this new album. Really, really, really getting into it, digging into it. There are some really, really good stuff. Um, it, it's interesting when these these things cross because you're just like, I'm not really expecting this to be, uh, well, something that is the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, be something to take up quite a lot of real estate in my mind. You know, you're thinking to yourself, oh, is this going to be sound like another band? Uh, sound like these artists? Sound like this? Sound like that? No, these guys uh, sound pretty... Uh, Sound pretty fresh, to be frank, and uh, we like fresh here. Fresh is is good, and uh, this album, I, I can't get it out of my head, this new album, um, Made by These Moments, is, is really, really good. Uh, the opening track, Disaster, it is a rocking, rocking ruckus. A ruckus, ruckus, good time, wasting time, want to be loved, no one else like me. Love these lyrics, because you know what you're going to get into if you're looking for a good, some good cowboy songs, but... Uh, Please check out the red. Uh, please check out the red clay strays. That's not going to get uh, you know red clay stray, like red clay stray, red clay stray. No, you could do a tongue twister, but a really great band and excited to see them uh, next time they come through town. Um, I knew they were opening up for the Stones um, on their tour a little bit, and they also are coming through Indy in September. Might make that drive down there. A lot of good stuff. Uh, making its way down in the indie in the indie market so uh always looking i'll go anywhere to see any band uh, especially when they are uh, rocking a fair like the red clay strays but again the uh vocals by this band are really really awesome um you're not going to be disappointed at all uh brendan coleman uh lead singer really 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 brings it uh drummer john uh hall and guitarist zach Rischel. um bassist andrew bishop and uh, guitarist drew nix fill out this uh this great band that i'm really 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 getting into so please check them out a uh, little rocking um if you're happening to watching live uh they've or listening i'll describe they just got a really cool look and a vibe um lead singer looks pretty cool and clean cut um 
but everyone else looks like they're ready to rock in some kind of uh country rock vibe all really awesome awesome musicians from what i've seen from all my performances uh, my performance their performances so uh check in a little bit more into that because uh, we're curious to hear just uh what you're um thinking um because it's always awesome when you are uh, thinking different things um last week if you remember uh we had a really awesome guest in march she joined us um she is uh um promoting the pkd foundation for polycystic kidney disease so remember if you can uh, make a donation it is on marge's fundraising page which is on the uh, twitter okay so we're going to get you that here um marge is just really awesome for these things that she supports and we support her and for forced supporting these things because honestly um supporting is really 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 good um her uh Twitter handle is Marge R A G U S O Marge Raguso, and uh, you can go right there and right at the top, you could click on to the uh, thing, and you can make yourself a donation. We're going to leave the ticker down there on the bottom because uh, in case you uh, want to make a donation, please reach out to us if you want our help to get you to that page. We have no problem doing that. Uh, this weekend, uh, speaking of a problem, it's going to be a lot of traffic. Um, for the Lollapalooza, can't believe it's already starting tomorrow, August 1st, last day of July. We have made it through July um, with lots of episodes, lots of rock and fun. And um, Lollapalooza's got a lot, of, a lot of everything. Megan Thee Stallion, you know, she's performing here, she's performing there. She's performing at Lollapalooza with Hozier, with, uh, oh, I like him. I like some of his music. Uh, some people don't but I, I do um saturday is where we're going to put a little bit of focus on because the deftones are playing and killer mike we like those two equally um killers are also playing we talked about them last week uh really be awesome if somehow we can get into there and see somebody like bridget calls me baby a uh, band that we've talked about quite a bit here Awesome, awesome. Well, not quite a bit. We talked about them once and we're going to talk about them a lot more coming on down the pike because they're just a really great band and we keep listening and listening more into this album wish we can get out there somehow um maybe next year we could somehow get some kind of uh, a press pass to be out there and interview some of these artists that would just be amazing wouldn't it you know it, it would be cool um to interview somebody like a, a blink 182 who's playing on uh sunday along with two-door cinema club pierce the veil zed's dead um just a lot of great bands that are playing over the weekend. Uh, get your get out there if you uh, get an opportunity. Also, uh, playing on Saturday is uh, Sammy Hagar, Joe Satriani, Michael Anthony, and Jason Bonham. They're doing Van Halen. They're doing some Sammy. That would be awesome to get out there. I'm hearing some of the live stuff, and if you're a Van Halen fan, or should I say Van Hager, uh, that might be something interesting for you to uh, check out. So get out there. Uh, and, and dig into uh, all of that because that's just going to be great. Um, recently, we've been digging quite a lot into Primus. Um, I've got my little, I call her little, I've got my soon to be four year old daughter every single day requesting Primus, Primus, Primus. How personally can you not request Primus? Okay. Um, Les Claypool and bassist and vocals, um, guitarist Larry Lalonde on guitar. Uh, well, guitar, drummer, Tim Herb Alexander, just a really good three-piece. Of course, they've had other members on drums like Jay Lane and um, Tim the Herb Alexander. Uh, no, Tim, I'm sorry, um, Tim the Brain. Um, not Tim the Brain. Um, I think his just name was the Brain. Um, just a really, really, Brian, Brian the Brain, uh, Mantia, just a really awesome um, three-piece in so many different regards from where they have started, which is just crazy to see where they are have been i mean with those beginning albums of course we've talked about them on here quite a couple times i know that for a fact quite a couple times but uh lately i've been digging into their last couple albums because honestly um they uh kind of missed me uh 2011's green Nagahide. uh 
2014's Primus and the Chocolate Factory with the Fungi Ensemble, and uh, the Desaturating Seven. These three albums kind of slipped under my radar. So we're going to kind of uh, focus in on these uh, three albums because this is when Tim Alexander's uh, back in the band on the last two on that uh, first album, which is really crazy. Um, the one that uh, is called Green Nagahide. Um, really interesting to uh, just hear Jay Lane on drums because if you're not familiar with who Jane Lane is, um, He's currently plays with uh, the Wolf Brothers uh, with Bob Weir, and he plays in Dead and Company. And you just say, "What an awesome, awesome, awesome um, to be able to be playing in such great uh, spectrums." But this Green Dog Hide, uh, I, I think, is how you pronounce it. It's always crazy pronouncing this stuff. Um, just a really, 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 really awesome album that I'm shocked. Um, slipped under my radar. I mean, it gets started right off the bat. Uh, Hennepin Crawler is just a really, really great song. But uh, The Last Salmon Man, uh, Fisherman's Chronicles Part 4, um, the song is pretty tight. And you can see just a little bit how different they start to change from that, that first song that I played by them. <laughs> What I like about this band is that they start to, as we get later into their career, start to say, you know what, we don't have to be so heavy all the time. We could lay back a little bit and be jammy. Um, this album has got a little bit of all of that, okay? Uh, Tragedies are coming, really, really great, uh, catchy, 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 catchy track. Um, Jilly's on Smack, really, really awesome. Um, Lee Van Cleef, if you can go ahead and check out that video, really catchy track about Clint Eastwood and Lee Van Cleef. Um, uh, I like 11, Ho Info, Ho Info Demand. I like how it's spelled H O I N F O D A M A N, Ho Info Demand. Um, really great album, though. Okay, um, a band, I think, returning to some of their roots, really, really, really kind of, oh, what's the word I'm looking for, getting to some of the things that, well, a lot of people uh, enjoy, you know, and I think this is just kind of where we, we seem to be with this band, is I enjoy everything by them. Um, you get into this next album that they release after this one, um, Primus and the Char Chocolate Factory with the Fungi Ensemble. I don't know why I didn't listen to this one. Um, Tim Alexander used an intentionally unusual drum kit throughout the album, which contained various rototoms, frying pans, uh, UFO drum, and more in addition to his already large drum kit. So, I mean, he was just putting in a whole bunch of different, different sounds. Um, what's crazy is that uh, to tie in the album's Wonka thing, uh, Primus began selling exclusive chocolate Primus bars, uh, a Mr. Crinkle bar, a pork, a pork soda bar, Professor Nutter bar. Of course, from the Tales from the Punch Bowl album, uh, Bastard Bars, just really, really great. Uh, if you could go ahead and again check out uh, Candyman, a really awesome little song. Um, I like when Les seems to say, "Hey, you know what we're gonna do here tonight? We're going to uh, we're gonna step back a little bit and we're going to play the stand-up bass. We like a little bit of stand-up bass here. So uh, when Les does that on this album, um, Forty Minutes, okay, Umpa Augustus, really, really interesting, Umpa Veruca. Um, of course, Veruca Salt's a great band that uh, the name um, came from, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Um, last track, Farewell Wonkites. Again, you're in for Primus. You know, you're in for what you're getting on Disaster Hating 7. They decided to say, hey, you know what? Um, this is their first of with what they would call original material because they don't call the last album original material. Um, what they wanted to do was the 1978 children's book, The Rainbow Goblins. Um, wanted to make that into an album. Um, very interesting. Um, very, very interesting. Um, little bit of an album. Uh, progressive. Okay, 34 minutes, seven songs, the valley, the seven, the track, the scheme, the dream, the storm, the ends. Uh, check it out. Really, really interesting. Uh, went all the way to number three um, on Billboard charts. Um, but this 2022 three-song little album that came out, uh, Conspiranoid, um, didn't feel like sitting in the studio, I guess. So the three of them came out with three songs, 19 minutes, really awesome. Conspiranoia, great, great song, 11 minutes, their longest track, Follow the Fool. Got some really cool lyrics. Um, Aaron on the side of caution. Uh, music by Larry Lalonde. Um, of course, all lyrics are always by Les Claypool. Um, interesting album. I'm talking about some of the, oh, what are they called? Um, conspiracy theories that sometimes may get out of hand. But just, again, 
what are you doing if you haven't listened to uh, some of these new Primus albums? Really, really dig into it. Um, Isaac Hayes. Okay. Uh, recently, we talked about uh, watching this little documentary about uh, stacks, and I really did not realize how integral or important um, Mr. Uh, Isaac Hayes was to that whole entire uh, whole entire scene. And uh, we've really been wanting to dig in more, so we decided to jump right in at Black Moses, a double album um, released on the Stax Records. It's the follow-up to the very successful Shaft soundtrack, of course, we have mentioned on here before. Um, just really, really cool just double albums, man. We always talk about how great they are. Um, album is really cool because it starts out with a Never Can Say Goodbye. Awesome. They long to be a really, really great, great track. Um, Nothing Takes Place of You. Um, I like that it's two, you would think these albums would be longer, but I mean, you got, well, I guess it is longer. I start to, I start to digress because these, 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 these sides are like 25 minutes long. So you get like a hundred minutes of, of really great, 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 great music with the bar case, um, doing the instrumentation. We, of course we have uh, talked about, um, I really, really like a man who on the last track going in circles uh seven minute seven seven minutes written by jerry peters um really 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 uh it was originally uh performed by the friends of distinction um really great uh covered by luther vandross but a really great way to finish out the album and it was recorded in hollywood california um like to sit back and imagine such an album um as this being recorded but this is one that just recently we're spinning more of and we wanted to to push your way to say hey you know what are you listening to this 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 great 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 uh you know isaac hayes album because uh porous had you know um which we're going to get to in a second sampled um ike's rack uh ike's rap number two in the song glory box which is really crazy um renaissance mc sampled I, I, ike's rack um, just really, really cool to see sometimes how samples samples come and samples are are used. Um, samples are are something that we're going to start to just dig into a little bit more here, a little bit more there. Um, tonight we're going to take an example, like we mentioned some of the Isaac Hayes stuff right there being sampled, but uh, we're going to take a little bit of a, a, a different route right now and kind of say. Um, what about the Beastie Boys? We've talked about Paul's Boutique before, but who's really sampling some of these songs? Wow. Just that beginning drum right there um, from uh, Shake, Your Ru or Shake Your Rump. Um, that's not them. Okay, that's from Funky Snakefoot and Alphonse Mozone um, from the 73 album Funky Snakefoot. So it's really kind of cool to get little things added in okay there are and throughout the album um throughout this song um you've got hoo-ha got them all in deck africa bombadas um jazzy sensation ronnie laws tell me something good you've got a lot of it mixed into the one song so as we go through as the weeks continue and we're maybe make this a bigger episode we want to focus in on some of these cool songs that were really made into a, a, a sample or sampled so you know using a, a recent album like paul's boutique in which we talked about uh seeker rump is just just filled 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 um it's the joint um song of the same tile by funky four plus one um another really cool thing is is that uh, shake shake your rump uh, from the unity album by james brown and africa bombada uh mostly taken from the car wash soundtrack by uh rose royce but just a lot a lot a lot of stuff going on in this song um samples are great okay um you know what you say you say samples um what is a music sample a music sample could be quite a lot of things um what is a music sample uh what is your definition of a music sample uh, before we go into ours um you know it is using a kind of a portion of a sound recording and another recording, uh, maybe elements such as the rhythm, the melody, the speech, the sound effects could be a lot, a lot of different things, but uh, this really goes into a lot of different uh, thoughts. So uh, which we're going to expand bigger as the episodes, but uh, shake your rump. is a great example of having just lots and lots and lots 
stuff going on. Okay. Uh, there's also a uh, disco call is from Foxy's Get Off. Okay. Um, just, 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 just to sit there and mix it and mix it and mix it. Uh, right before the rap starts again, um, during the first two run throughs, um, the drum fills in Good Times, Bad Times is also in the track. Um, you know, how much could be in one song? How many songs can we cover? I think we're going to have to see as we go along to see just what that answer may be. Um, but again, you know, we're glad to, uh, we're glad to oblige you just like recently. Um, I always like to put on some, maybe some more heavier stuff when I'm cutting the lawn. Um, it's got its fair share of different sounds, um, is, uh, corns follow the leader. Um, have not listened to this album in quite a long time, but, uh, to say that it isn't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, memorable in some way would be a lie. Because honestly, um, I don't know where it's been in my life. Um, came out in 1998. I was there 70 minutes long. Um, of course, All in the Family uh, was the first track uh, to be released from it. But uh, honestly, was not uh, one of my favorites from the album. Um, just a lot of things came from this. Of course, in 99, they were on Lollapalooza. I mean, that's all a palooza. What a look at me, Woodstock 99. Got the life. Um, the song is actually a really, actually well written song, and I'm uh, not afraid to admit that. Freak on a Leash, another great song from this album. Um, just spinning a lot of good stuff. Uh, there are a lot of guests on the album Ice Cube, Fred Durst, Trey Hardison. Um, but some of the deeper cuts, tracks 10 and 11, Justin and Seed, um, really, really great. My Gift to You, track 13 is really, really awesome. Um, also is really awesome is a hidden track, Earache My Eye, by uh, the great Cheech and Chong. Dun, 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 dun. BBK is a really great song at six. Um, the production on this album, they say uh, by doing research, there was a lot of chaos going on in the background. Like... Uh, a lot of people doing a lot of things maybe they shouldn't have when lead singer was uh, Jonathan Davis was recording it's on. But uh, when you look at uh, the guitars of Head and Monkey and the bass of Fieldy, just that, that, that slapping action in the drums of David Silvera, Silveria, uh, just really, really, really great uh, album that stuck the, the test of time. And as we go through more and more episodes, I, I want to get some people on here to just hear their opinion of Corn, And they got a, got a show coming up. Uh, that honestly it's on a saturday in uh, september and if i am not busy i'm definitely going to be out to check that out because honestly um been just digging more into that really recently um also really recently we've been talking about a lot of awesome blues players around here and to, to keep up on that i mean if you haven't went back and um, dug through some of our uh, Albert King, Freddie King, BB King, uh, Otis Rush, any of the ones that we've dug into, please, please, please go back and do that. It's really, really great. Just like, don't forget to make a donation to Marge's uh, fundraising page, um, the PTK uh, Far, uh, Foundation for Polycystic Kidney Disease. Just really a great thing. Please do that uh, for us. And um, also, please, um, if you do have an opportunity to uh, just, you know, share with us what you've been listening to recently in the comments, we have no, uh, we have no shame, but to listen to what you're uh, wanting to share with us. Cause it's just always awesome to, to talk music. So um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, talking music. It's, it's, it's come on, come on. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I mean, I don't know what to say. You know, I, I, I thank you. But uh, to keep going on here with this great uh, um, guitar section here, um, John Lee Hooker is one that comes to mind is, you know, why haven't we covered him yet? Well, we're trying to cover them all. Um, you know, what, uh, you know, you know, well, let's, let's start with the fact that, uh, you know, his, uh, what's the, you know, um, he's best known. Okay. He, he, he got started really, really early. Okay. Cause he was born in 1912 or some people say 1917, which I always love when you're doing these researches and when you get a lot of like, was he born this, uh, time was he born at that time? Um, you know, it, it, 
it's 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 interesting you know it's 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 interesting to uh to do these kind of research um it's interesting that how they could get sometimes um um get that one get just get that whole entire uh just what's the what's the word i'm looking for get that whole entire uh oh uh just the Back to the rankings of guitar players, because that's kind of like, like how, how do they just pigeonhole these guitar players? No guitar player should ever be, uh, should be ever pigeonholed in, in any in any way, shape, or form. Um, but that's that's what happens, you know what I mean? So John Lee Hooker again, um, he developed in Detroit. Okay, um, he, he he, what's the word I'm looking for? He often incorporated a lots of different elements into his song. Um, something called Miss Mississippi Hill Country Blues, which was very interesting to read about because uh, honestly, um, that sounds awesome. I'd like to, to, to listen to some Hill Country Blues. Um, just awesome, awesome. Um, a little more in depth on that is it's got a very strong emphasis on rhythm and percussion, um, steady guitar riffs, few chord changes. Um, you know, uh, to say that sometimes we often have this discussion, like what a man on the guitar can create or a woman on the guitar can create, um, definitely is something that I think, uh, well, that's what stands you apart from other things. You know, playing the blues in the 19 and the 30s, 40s is a lot different than Steve Ray Vaughan playing the blues in the 80s. So uh, really big respect always to, uh, you know, to John Lee Hooker, to, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, but uh, back to the Detroit sound, that's kind of like where Mississippi is kind of where uh, he got his, uh, well, where uh, he was born. Um, Tutwiler, um, what's that called? Mississippi. Uh, they were all homeschooled. There was um, really crazy. There was really uh, 11 children um, with him being the youngest, which is Honestly, I always think of that. How would it be to be uh, the youngest of 11 children? Um, very, very interesting. Very, very awesome. Um, but back to Detroit. He uh, began as a janitor in Detroit and uh, started his recording career in 1948. Um, when Modern Records, based in Los Angeles, released his demo um, in Detroit. Uh, Boogie Chillin' was the single in 1949. Um Love the early periods. Uh, he toured and recorded with Eddie Kirkland. Um, Eddie Kirkland, if you are not familiar with uh, the Eddie Kirkland, was another guitarist, harmonicist, uh, known as the Gypsy of Blues for his rigorous touring schedules. Love these names um, for his rigorous touring schedules. Um, John Lee Hooker, though, I mean, you know, when I listen to Boom, Boom, Boom. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to shoot you right down. I mean. You can't tell me that John Lee Hooker isn't isn't amazing at uh, the amazing things that he does in his albums. I mean, he's got a huge discography. I mean, not as huge as you would honestly think that they would be for coming out with as many albums as he uh, came out with. Um, don't look back. Um, he's he's played with so many, so many, so many, so many, so many, so many different artists. Um, we've talked about it on here as the healer um 1980s nines the healer you got los lobos bonnie ray charlie musclewhite carlos santana where we're going to focus tonight um it's won a grammy for the best traditional blues performance but oh man to hear john lee uh just his vocals uh mixed with carlos santana who we've covered re recently or mixed with uh charlie musclewhite's harmonica you know i mean what a legend you know unfortunately um for for john lee he passed away because i know john lee he loved to tour he would be out there touring right now he would be out there playing music and and, and jamming um you know john lee is, is definitely uh awesome okay he's won six grand he's won what, countless grammys okay uh he's won uh at least six at least six which is huge um also very very uh awesome um he, he plays uh, Blues Brothers on Maxwell Street outside Aretha Franklin's restaurant. Um, really awesome. Really, 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 really awesome. Um, just, uh, we talked about Hooker and Heat on here. Okay, Gand Heat. I mean, I almost forgot. We, we've took time to, to this legend. Um, dig deeper. 
That's what we want you to do. We haven't been able to dig so deep tonight because we don't know down the road. We don't know. We might have an whole episode on John Lee Hooker because you could have seven. You have 17. But uh, again, really, really worth uh, the time um, for you to get out there and, and just listen to some John Lee Hooker. Listen to some, some of that healer. We got to get healed out there. That's definitely what we need is 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 is, is some healing. And, uh, well, I'm going to do some healing uh, for you. Um, also, really quickly here, you're looking for something from the 80s to dig into? Um, the Arrhythmics, um, another band we could spend a lot of time, um, you know, British duo. Okay, Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart. That is who um, the band is. But uh, to go to Touch from 1983, uh, 45 minutes of just 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 synth amazingness. Here comes the rain again. Um, last track, though, is where I want you to uh, dig in really quick here. Um, Paint a Rumor, 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, if you like earlier uh, mentioned Killers, dig into it. Dig into this whole album. Um, it's got lots and lots and lots of sounds. Uh, we don't talk about lists, but it is on a lot of great album lists. So if you uh, like great albums, any Le- Lennox's vocals is just just amazing. Um, Dave Stewart, his arrangements, his guitars, and his keyboards, his backing vocals, and his drum sequencing. So the, I mean, what a great put together uh, band and a duo. You know, are they a band? Are they a duo? Another question you can always ask um, anyone out there. Is this a? Is this a is this a duo? Is this a band? But one thing I do know is that they are very, very awesome and they're worth your time checking out. So go ahead and check those guys out and check out the Eurythmics Touch because it's just a really, really, really great album. Um, also is really, really, really great is uh, the Velvet Underground. Okay. The Velvet Underground is just always loaded with really awesome stuff. And honestly, what can you say about the Velvet Underground? Lou Reed. I mean, it's just quite, quite, quite amazing. The uh, feats at this band, um, you know, was we're able to, uh, able to, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dig into. But the song really quick here tonight that I wanted to uh, cover, because we're not going to cover the whole band. You can't cover a band of this greatness in this short amount of time. But the song that I wanted to talk about was a Venus in Furs. Just a really, really interesting, interesting song um, with interesting themes for the time. A 1967 song um, with, with uh, it was recorded even in 66. The producer, Andy Warhol, you know, a song about, uh, you know, sadomasochism, just some really interesting bondage, really interesting, interesting vibes from um, the band on this track. And just honestly, when putting this together, I'm just curious of why we haven't talked about the Velvet Underground before. <laughs> Venus and Furs from their uh, debut album. Um, again, awesome, awesome, awesome debut album. Um, a, an album that you could spend multiple episodes talking about. But uh, the meaning, again, um, is uh, there is no intro or build up to the song. The track starts as if you open the door to a decadent Marrakesh, then a blast of air conditioning Middle Eastern menace with a plotting beat that's menace, missing link between Bolero and Led Zeppelin's version of When the Levee Breaks. Interesting. I never thought of that. Uh, Lou Reed on lead vocals, lead guitar, and Osher's guitar. Um, John Cale, which you're getting that sound from, is that electric viola, which is really interesting for the time. Sterling Morrison on bass guitar and Maureen Tucker on percussion. Very, very, very interesting very, 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 very awesome um, track. So, uh, you know, you, know, you can never get a too much. Uh, never, 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 never get too much uh, uh, Velvet Underground here. So we decided to get started a little bit with a little track there, Venus and Furs. Uh, Chris Christopherson, you know, we talk about him as a great actor, but what about his musical career? I mean, you talk about somebody who's um, really, really, really put it on a line as a country singer. Um, just, just... He was a retired country singer, crazily, but I mean, a career, a career that honestly, I was so shocked. Uh, you know, he, he wrote me and Bobby McGee, uh, that track that you know by Janis Joplin, um, for the good times, another great song that he has written, but just a really interesting, um, bound of work. Okay. Uh, debut album, 1970s, Christofferson, um, 
I don't know if you've listened to this, but really interesting and deep, especially if you're into some more of the singer songwriter, like guitars, just really cool. Um, Norbert Putman on bass does a really good job, but, uh, interesting, interesting stuff. Um, interesting to see what a great, great, great artist Christopher Christofferson is, uh, Chris Christofferson. Um, love this picture of him. If you're watching live too, just really, really awesome. And we're going to get some more of him later down the road too. Um, thank you so much for joining tonight. Uh, thank you so much for, again, um, if you can, please reach out to that, uh, PKT foundation, polycystic kidney foundation, uh, Marjorie Gusso, um, please, uh, reach out and, um, go on to her, uh, if you're having any trouble, here is on the screen um, a little description, just a little bit of how much really goes into this and how much we need to uh, donate. So please do that. Um, please turn into uh, at the show, uh, either this last week, if you haven't listened to, talked about a great soundtrack on there. Um, but this next week, we're, we've got another great soundtrack lineup. We've got a great movie lined up, uh, seven. That's going to be at 8, 15 p.m. on Friday. So please tune into that. Um, please tune into everything else that we're doing here. Um, I thank you so much. Um, it is always, 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 always a great time uh, talking tunes with you. And uh, we hope to do it again soon. Let's go back and listen to some of those, those jams we talked about tonight. There was quite, 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 quite a lot of, of, of just really, really good stuff we talked about. Uh, check out that Red Clay Strays, Primus, you know, Chris Christopherson, John Lee Hooker. You know, the list goes on and on. Shake that rump rhythmics corn so many awesome stuff if you hit up any of those live shows let me know and until the next time everybody i am tony b and we really 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 appreciate you uh being here so everyone out there take care good night